I have just found the easiest way for you to create AI assistants. Introducing Pi Data. This is a new toolkit for building AI assistants using function calling, not what is function calling. Well, this is a way that enables large language models to achieve tasks by calling functions and intelligently choosing their next step based off the response, just like how a human would solve problems. Now, assistants use large language models to achieve tasks by calling functions. They come with a built-in memory, knowledge, as well as storage, which makes it easier to build AI autonomous assistants and applications. Sorry for being repetitive, but this month we had insane partnerships with big companies giving out subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. These are tools that will streamline your business's growth and improve your efficiency. Just being a patron this past month, you were given access to six paid subscriptions completely for free. Not only do you access these subscriptions, but you gain the ability for consulting, networking, collaborating with the community, as well as with myself. You get access to daily AI news, resources, giveaways, and so much more. If you're interested, check out the Patreon link in the description below to gain access to these benefits. Just take a look at what you can actually do with Pi Data. So our Streamlit application, which is a chat interface, is served on localhost 8501. We have three AI apps which we are going to be demoing with today. First is our PDF Assistant. The PDF Assistant is a great AI to kind of test retrieval augmented generation and see how the AI works over a knowledge base. What we fed it We've already loaded up a recipe book. Now you might think is if a recipe book is a great uh, way to test out an AI. I think it is because it's got images, it's got fancy font, it's got random information. It's got a lot of stuff which isn't really related to the recipes. So it's a great way to see if the AI can work through this problem. Let's pick up a recipe and see if the AI can match that. All right, let's just see if the AI can pick up a chicken casserole recipe for us. So we have our PDF assistant. Now FileData gives you two types of assistants. One is a typical retrieval augmented generation where you, where the assistant will search the knowledge base, take the relevant information, in this case, a recipe and stuff it in the prompt. That's one way to go about things. And another is an autonomous assistant, which is what FileData specializes in. Autonomous assistants can figure out what they need to do and call functions. So in this case, when we ask, um, say, how do I make chicken casserole? What it'll do is it'll first figure out, hey, I need to search the knowledge base for this recipe. It'll go search the knowledge base first. Then after searching the knowledge base, it'll synthesize that information and present it in a usable manner. We feel autonomous assistants are the future of AI and the next step to retrieval augmented generation. Now, isn't that amazing? You're able to leverage function calling for AI assistants, which could potentially enable more efficient problem solving and task completion while mimicking human problem solving processes. It's having a built in memory, knowledge, or even a storage capability, which would likely streamline the development process for autonomous AI applications. It's something that we're going to take a look at as we go further into the video, as we explore what you can do with Pi Data, how you can create your own AI assistant using function calling, and so much more so with that thought guys stay tuned and let's get straight into the video if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one with me where you can access my consulting services where i can help you grow your business or basically give you a lot of different types of solutions with ai definitely take a look at the calendar link in the description below what is up guys welcome back to another youtube video at the world of ai in today's video we're going to be taking a look at pi data this is a toolkit for creating ai assistance using function calling this means that you're able to make decisions by triggering specific actions based on user queries and this is much like how humans actually solve problems but in this case you're utilizing large language models which are employing to be used to understand and responding to user inputs which is going to allow the assistance that you create 
create to intelligently choose their next step based off a of function column. Now, let's just take a look at this example where you can use this app that was created with uh, PyData. And you can see that this is a Hacker News AI. And you can ask it example questions already on different trending things, topics on AI. You can talk about what's on show, or ask about it, and just basically retrieve information from Hacker News AI. So in this case, I'm just going to talk about what's trending about iPhone. And we can see that if you can send this prompt in, it's going to work towards retrieving different sorts of information that would best source this prompt. So once this has fully finished, I'll be right back. And just like that, we get this Apple Vision Pro review, which is something that has been popping off a lot recently. This is Apple's new AI tech, or not AI, but like its new tech product where it has released these vision glasses. And we can see that it does a great job retrieving the most recent information very fast with Pi Data's new application. So you might be wondering, how does it actually work? How can you actually create these AI assistants? Well, it first starts off with the AI assistant itself. This this is the primary entity within PyData and they're basically responsible for interacting with users where you can send different tasks and you're basically receiving results from it. This is where the assistants actually leverage the large language model to understand user queries as well as formulating responses based off of what you want it to basically formulate. This is where it sends that query into the large language model. It runs the function by retrieving the function calling capability to do so. And this is where it then sends back the final result where it can go back into a storage or it can go back to the user. Now, for large language models, it serves as the cognitive backbone. And this is where it possesses the ability to understand natural language inputs from your user. So whatever you process with uh, PyData or with the assistance, it's able to generate appropriate responses. You also have the ability to function call, and this is the main thing behind PyData. This is where it's a mechanism that is focusing on triggering specific actions or tasks within its overall architecture. This is when a user is sending a response or a request to this assistant, it's able to identify the relevant functions and it executes it based off of what the user query is and this is where the function calling is allowing for a modularization of the extraction of tasks and it enables efficient problem solving and task completion basically within this architecture you also have this ability of built-in memory where it's able to build and store whatever user queries are sent from previous interactions and it's basically just a storage that can retain information now the best thing about this is the autonomous AI application. This is where it's able to facilitate the development of autonomous AI apps by providing this framework for building intelligent assistance. And this is something that works autonomously, obviously, and it's able to perform any sort of task on its own, which makes its own decisions and interacts with the users autonomously. You can see with this example over here, you have a data assistant which is the name of the AI system that was created with PyData. And this is where the user sends in a query where it asks a question from a database. This is where it then sends it to the assistant. Assistant then follows through with different functions. It runs by showing the tables, runs by describing the tables, and runs a query to achieve the results through different function calling met met methods. Sorry. And this is where it's then sent back to the assistant and then that assistant will then convey that message or the result back to you. Now, since I suck at going through the demos, I'm just going to let Ushpreet go over this because he does a great job in showcasing how you can get started with this application. What we need today is our terminal and our code editor. In our terminal, after installing Phi Data, we simply run Phi Workspace Create which gives us an option to choose from a couple of pre-built templates. We'll choose the AI app template, give it the default name, and we'll see PyData create a production-ready code base for us. Now, this type of code base would normally take a team weeks to build, and you get this in one command. After you have your code base ready, what we'll do is we'll run the AI locally using Docker. So let's pull up our Docker dashboard on the side and run our AI using one simple command, Phi Workspace Up. What it'll do is it'll create a database, which also has a vector database. 
We'll create a streamlit application for us as a chat interface to test out our AI. And then finally, it'll give us a fast API server, which will serve our AI behind REST endpoints. So most of the time you will have a product or a front end, which you'll want to integrate. This is the API you will call. Let's press enter and see it creating the containers we need. Now let's test the AI out. And that's easy as that, guys. You're able to run it locally, run it on AWS, and so much more. And I truly recommend that you take a look at the documentation because it showcases a little bit better. If you are to click on build an AI application, you can see that it gives you a step-by-step -step demonstration as to how you can run this locally, showcases how you can create your code base, how you can set up your API keys, as well as what sort of app you can create with it. You're also able to run this on AWS and it gives you different building blocks as to how you can get started. So definitely take a look at this on in the description below because this will give you a better idea as to how or what you can actually do with PyData. Now let's just go over one of the cool examples that they have created. This is a demo streamlit application which serves as a PDF image and website assistant. Now I'm going to copy this password over here, click enter, and then let's get started. Now in this case, you have three different apps within this streamlit application. This is where you can use the PDF assistant, which is the example we saw already. You have the image assistant where you can chat with images as well as the website assistant where you can chat with website content. In this case, I'm going to click the image assistant and i'm going to move forward with this so this is where i'm going to enter my own username i'm going to just name my own self over here and over here i'm going to drag and drop a file and we're going to get started with it so i have uploaded this math problem which is basically stating a contest is randomly picking winners based on their entry number use the random number table below to select 10 winners based on their entry number out of the 748 people who entered the contest so in this case i'm gonna ask it simply please answer the question above and let's see if it does a great job at answering this now, once that's finished generating, I'm going to be able to give you an answer. So we can see that the image shows the worksheet, blah, blah, blah. The contest is randomly picking. So it reads this properly. Let's see if it's able to answer it. Now, the worksheet has instructions ranging from one to things, several highlighted winners. And there's circled numbers on the table, which are presumably selected winners. Now, I'm going to ask it specifically. I want you to specifically state the winners numbers and let's see if it's able to do that and just like that we have the winners and this is one of the great things that you can do with this guys this is a super easy way for you to build intricate ai applications with amazing function calling capabilities and this is something that was actually done with PyData. this is just one example there's various others and I truly recommend that you take a look at this. So th there's a lot of usability to this where you can create a knowledge assistant, which can answer questions about your PDFs, a research assistant, data assistant, Python assistant, customer assistant, and so much more. You get the flexibility to do so much with this. And this is all done with this function calling uh, assistant capability project. Now, I truly recommend you check this out because this will definitely help you guys out because this is an easy way for you to create various assistants using PyData. But with that thought, guys, I truly recommend you join their Discord because they have a really great group and this is a great way for you to start building assistants in AI super easily as they have a full documentation as to how you can get started. But that's basically it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you check out the Patreon page if you want to access our private Discord where you can get subscriptions to AI tools completely for free. Make sure you follow us on Twitter if you guys haven't already. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.